Well, happy Labor Day Monday, isn't it? Yeah. I was talking to a few of you today, and some of you are saying you have never been in school on Labor Day. Is that true? How many? How many? Yeah, yeah. I think we should just cancel classes today, Kate. I don't hate. Paul, I, I really don't think we have the power to do that. We don't. Pretty positive. Okay, you guys got to go to class. So, hey, I will, <laughs> that, was, that was off. Okay, Labor Day Monday. Labor Day weekend, Kate. Yes. Signals a shift for me every year. Hey, it's, it's tell a, us about that it's shift, It's a Paul. marker. It's a marker for me. You want to hear about it? I, I You're think we'd all hear love about to hear about it. About it. Marker for me every year because it is a seasonal marker. How about for you guys? Doesn't it, it for me, it tells me summer is over. Yes? Yeah? Well, tough. It does for me. Summer Paul, is Paul's no. the bearer of bad news this morning. It's, <laughs> I'm the bearer over. of bad news. Summer is over. It is now fall. It's fall. It's a seasonal shift. Don't you think? Well, Paul, I, I understand the heart of matter of what you're trying to get at. You know, honestly, I was just saying to you, Labor Day actually doesn't even signify in my mind anymore because I work at Hope College. So I, for instance, put my trash out last night, forgetting that no one was coming. I'm the only one on my street that has their trash can out. Okay. It's all right. I'm okay. prepared. Okay. So for some of us, it doesn't make a difference, but for me, it does. Now, Paul. Yes. I Kate. think perhaps a bigger signifier for you, knowing you just a little bit. Yeah is not so much that summer's over, and it, it's not that Paul's summer's excited about over. that. Kate Coyman, little shout out. Hey. But um, it's that one of your favorite seasons starts. And it I'm does. not talking about weather. It does, it does, and you are right. College football has begun, yes. <laughs> that, that is also a signal that summer's over and fall is here, college football. It is. So you had it a great was, weekend. I had a good weekend. I had a bad weekend. I had a good weekend. Hope College that. football team opened up with a victory. Nice job. <laughs> I had a depressing Saturday night as the Big Blue got squashed. <laughs> Taken behind the woodshed by Alabama and got smoked. But no. it's a long season. It's, long it's season. a long season. U of M, favorite football team, right? U of M is my... U of M is my favorite football team, but my favorite football team to watch, I don't know about you guys, is the Oregon Ducks. Aren't they fun to watch? They are. Not because they got these funky uniforms. Though you do like that. I do like the funky uniforms. But because they have the fastest, the quickest offense in the country. Have, has anybody have watched them? I, I read somewhere that they can uh, call and execute a play within 13 seconds. That's amazing, isn't it, Kate? I can tell you're fired up. So, <laughs> Kate, blown away. Kate, you, actually, I actually am impressed by that. That's 13 impressive. seconds. It's impressive. 13 seconds, and it started. It's a lot of people to get on the same page in 13 seconds. Nice. And you know how they get on the same page, how? Kate? How? I'll tell you why. A couple years ago, they developed what they call sideline play cards. Have you seen those before? Whoa, okay. Dim the lights a little, PC. Okay, so see these little play cards they hold up on the sideline, which has different symbols and pictures, and what they're doing is communicating to everybody on the offense a certain play. And the whole purpose behind these little sideline play cards <laughs> is to get everybody on the same page as quickly as possible. You get it? So with that in mind, Kate. It's a brilliant strategy. It's a brilliant strategy, and I want to pick up on it. And I'll tell you why. Last night at the gathering, for those of you who were there, we talked about that this year we're going to be looking at the Gospel of Mark, both in chapel and at the gatherings. And for us throughout the year to get on the same page contextually all together as fast as we can, I developed my own play card. You want to see it? You want to yeah. see it? Yeah. Well, you're gonna. You're gonna. Okay. All right. Now, let me walk you through 
the Gospel of Mark play card. So, now listen closely because you're going to repeat it with me today and all through the year. We're going to repeat it, okay? So here we go. You're going to be seeing this in your sleep. You're going to say it in your sleep. So here we go. Gospel of Mark. Remember this. Gospel of Mark is the first gospel written by John Mark in the context where Caesar claims to be the Son of God ruling the kingdom of Rome where everyone is called to submit and obey. You like that? Submit and obey. Okay. <laughs> but, but, that's the transition now to this second line. But Mark writes that Jesus is the Son of God, proclaiming the kingdom of God is now and calling us, calling us, yes, <laughs> calling us to repent and believe. Okay? Here we go. We're going to practice, all right? I'll say it one more time, all right? So, the Gospel of Mark is the first gospel written by John Mark in the context where Caesar where claims, claims to be, be the, the Son of God. Very good. We're in class today. It's Labor Day. Okay. <laughs> claims to be the Son of God, ruling the kingdom, kingdom of, of Rome, Rome, where everyone is called to submit, submit and, and obey. obey. But, ooh, I like that. But, <laughs> Mark writes that Jesus, Jesus is, is the, the Son, Son of God, God proclaiming that the, the kingdom, kingdom of God, God is now, and we are called, called to... to... That's weak. We are, called, <laughs> we are called to repent and, and to believe. believe. Maybe I should get some hand signals going, too, with Cars. the play card. Yeah. Okay, right. one more time. Here we go. We got to get in. Gospel of Mark, first gospel written by John Mark, and it's written in the context where Caesar, Caesar claims, claims to, to be the Son of God, God ruling the kingdom, kingdom of Rome, Rome, where everyone is called to submit and obey. obey. Nice. But Mark writes that Jesus is the Son of God proclaiming that the kingdom of God is now, and we are called to... Yes, I love it. All right, very good. These are smart students, Kate. Smart, smart, smart students. Smart, smart students. I think my favorite part was the laughter about the phone, because I think they're so struck that you would use a phone to call people, actually. <laughs> That's ancient right up there. I still that's have one school. of those. I know. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Yep. All right. Hey, that's good. And not only will we be looking at this morning, but that's something that we hope begins to permeate um, our minds and our way of thinking as we look at the Gospel of Mark. Because I think, um, well, Trig preached last night about John the Baptist who came to prepare the way and called us to a gospel of, the repent of repentance and of forgiveness. And we hear that he picks up from the prophet Isaiah that somebody is coming before us to prepare the way. I think it's interesting, however, to look at even before he says that, the very first line in the Gospel of Mark is this, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, Son of God. I think it's easy for those of us who don't live in this time when Caesar is Lord, ruling the kingdom of God, to hear that and be like, yeah, 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 we know that. Jesus is the Son of God. We need to remember, however, that for the early believers, that was a jolting claim. That was a claim that made them think, whoa, wait a second. That's not what I have been told to believe. I think it's easy for us to look at that first, that top line of the play card and think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that down. I know Caesar's not the son of God. I know the kingdom of Rome is not a kingdom, but a city. I know that I'm not called to submit and obey to Caesar. I think, however, I know 
actually. That as we dig into the Gospel of Mark, into God's Word, we will see that even today in our world, there are things that rule, there are systems in place, there are people and systems who want us to believe that we need to submit to them. And I think we'll be surprised with what we find, and I think we'll be jolted, as well as the first Christians were, into a new way of seeing, a new vision for the way things are, and begin to live into our call of repentance and belief. Mm. And really, that's what Mark is calling us to, an alternative vision of how we see things, how we think, and how we live our lives. And so we're on a journey this semester with Mark, calling us to a different vision of way we see things, the way we think, and the way we live. How can we do that, Kate, yeah. together? Great question, Paul. Thank you. Well, one of the things is it's hard to cultivate this vision on our own, and the good news is we're not meant to do so. We're meant to do it with other followers of Christ, of others seeking to understand this vision. So we have some opportunities to study um, the Gospel of Mark in a more meaningful way this year. If you go to grow.hope.edu, which is um, Campus Ministries' website, you'll be able to find some of these opportunities. We want to highlight just a couple this morning. The first is that there are men's and women's Bible studies studying the Gospel of Mark. And I meant to bring it with me, but there's a great study guide um, by uh, theologian N.T. Wright. Don't be scared, like, theologian, ah, I'm not that smart. It's a great study guide, accessible for everybody. Those will be meeting on a weekly basis. Um, they will be led by students. Um, so there will be um, males leading the, the men's Bible studies and female students leading the women's Female Bible studies. studies. Yes. 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 You can sign up online. Those are weekly and go throughout the year. Perfect. And Kate, we're going to go through the other ones rapidly. Let's do it. So if you didn't want a full semester Bible study on the Gospel of Mark, you can become a member of a Talmudim group. They last for four weeks. You'll be memor memorizing scripture together. They're more intense focus groups. You can sign up online for those as well too. And last thing, Kate, what can they do? The last thing is on Wednesday nights at Pillar Church at 9 o'clock, there's going to be more of a teaching Bible study. So that's a kind of you can drop in any Wednesday and um, Trig and Dr. Husbands and the pastors over at Pillar, uh, Christophos and John Brown will be leading a teaching time of the Gospel Mark, looking more in depth at the scripture as well. Plethora of things to get involved in, and you have to go to class. So let me pray us out. God, we bless you for this day. Every day is a gift. And we thank you, God, that you've given us the ability to study, to learn, to be in community with each other, to grow, to love you more with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our might, and with all of our mind. Now, Lord, we submit to you, for you are Jesus, the Son of God. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.